Paris is burning. Weekly protest marches draw millions of demonstrators. General strikes halt transport, bin collection and education. The streets of the French capital are piled high with rubbish until protesters set the refuse alight. There are violent clashes between the police, anti-fascists and neo-Nazis. In one night, nearly 500 people were arrested. It started with pension reform, but is spiralling into something much bigger. Provoking questions about democracy, police brutality and the very nature of what it means to be French. Protests started after the French president, Emmanuel Macron, increased the age at which the French could retire, from 62 to 64. In France, the pension system is revered, kind of like the NHS in Britain. The French don't live to work, they work to live. They enjoy lunch breaks, working fewer hours, and spending their retirement caring for their grandchildren. These reforms are interpreted as a direct attack on their way of life and identity. To make matters worse, Macron passed the law without a parliamentary vote. This egregious overreach of executive power morphed the single-issue demonstrations into a broader challenge to Macron's authority, and spontaneous protests popped up all over France as a consequence. Like this one in Paris, its focus is a law persecuting refugees passed using the same democracy-free mechanism as the pension reforms. These protests are huge, like um, I think it was yesterday, we've had three, uh, three and a half million people in the streets all across France. So we're going to continue what we always did, which is show to the government that we are the people that should make the decisions and they are serving us and not the opposite way around. I'm defending my rights not to work until I'm 70 because I think uh, it's even worse. Uh, this, uh, this change as women uh, is going to affect us a lot more, especially for people that decide to have children. It's going to change their whole lives. Also, we're pushed everywhere to have long studies and uh, then it, uh, well, it fucks us up because then we're going to have even more time we're going to have to work. And I'm here demonstrating about everything that is related to retirement and all the inequalities, inequalities linked to it. I think today people who are, uh, des like, who are agreeing with Macron, they have this thing, oh look, in other countries it's worse, we shouldn't be complaining. It's not because you look at shit that you're not in the mud yourself, so you should look up. So the street has the power and that we're going to fight till the end. <laughs> you need to have dignity in life. And you need to also have the hope that you can live a life outside work and outside all this uh, capitalistic system that uses your body and then throws you out. We're going to win. Um, the, the young people, uh, they're starting uh, to, uh, to go uh, on the streets with us, with uh, the, the unions and, uh, and everyone else and the workers. And, uh, and so that's, that's a very dangerous situation for Macron. Uh, because uh, when the young are uh, in the streets, uh, who knows what's going to happen? And I think it's a, it's a, it's a crisis. Uh, it's a very big crisis for uh, for Macron. It's important to demonstrate, uh, to make our voices heard to the government, and to be together with people. I think there is also a sort of catharsis that it's not only you at home, that you come together with people, that you make this body of uh, protests. And I think together it's important to show there is a, a union of all the different movements for protests and that's why also it's important to support uh, people without papers. If you're still striking today, it's been several months, uh, we have several strikes. Um, so right now they're determined and they're even more determined by the fact that they know that the government is asking the police uh, to be violent with them and they just not possible in a democratic society to do that, so yeah, they're determined. Macron is passing a bunch of laws that is very problematic. There is the pension law, there is this law about immigration, there is the law that get passed with surveillance. So all of this, we need to come together and uh, be in the streets and uh, really have this conscience that we are the people and we need laws that represent our opinions. You'll have heard the jazz playing during that last interview. The feeling of a protest in France is different. There's good food, cold beer, and a creche so that young parents can come with their children. They take pleasure in political expression through collective action. 
But just as their protests differ, so too is the way in which they are policed. The French police don't fuck about. They have guns, stun grenades, tear gas and water cannons. Last week, a woman lost her thumb during protests, which saw 903 fires started in Paris and 457 arrests. The police were aggressive, trapping demonstrators before baton charges that did not discriminate between activists and innocent bystanders like tourists and journalists. We're outside the Pompidou in Paris and we're getting a lot of funny looks. People don't really seem to want us here. I don't think there's a lot of love for journalists around here, but then that's probably fair because most of the way that it's been reported, the strikes here, are that French people are lazy and violent and out for a good time rather than out to actually, you know, improve their working rights. It's probably about, how many people? A thousand people here and a lot of riot police, but it's really calm at the moment. Most of the action was on Thursday, which was two days ago. There was well, quite a lot of action in the city then and a lot of people have now received fines and received a couple of days in custody and so they're not coming out today. I saw some uh, policemen uh, punch people in the face and random people in the face. Uh, people were uh, punching on the floor. Uh, they used tear gas a lot in the streets and uh, people couldn't go away, even some tourists. Uh, and I had just one thing to say, don't go in France for the Olympics or anything else. Uh, remember what happened during the football match a few months ago? The police just punched an anybody, there isn't, we are, not in, we are less and less in a democracy and more and more in a, some kind of dictature, I'm sorry, not the worst, but some kind of dictature. Uh, my name is Antoine Leomont and I am a French member of parliament. Could you tell me what we're doing here? Here we are doing a little uh, apéro, which means we are eating uh, chips and drinking beers. Uh, and this is a meeting, small meeting, to uh, contest the reform of Emmanuel Macron. Do you think the police are using reasonable force during uh, these protests? No, no, not at all. Uh, uh, at this very moment, yes. But in the global protest that we had uh, during uh, the earlier day, days, sorry, uh, I think not, because th this is really violent. We have um, a lot of violence in France. The police is really, really, really harsh with people. They are beating people. They are uh, gassing, using gas against people. So, no, it's really violent. And uh, I, I, I send a message to uh, people watching us abroad to support us, to help us, to, to, to say to Emmanuel Macron that this is not normal, this is not a normal situation and that other people abroad, uh, uh, we need them to say it's violent because this is helping the French people to, uh, to be uh, safe because it's not safe anymore to, to protest in France. The way that it's coming across in British media is that the protesters are the aggressors. Would you say that it was the opposite? Yeah, yeah. We are just defending our rights actually because we don't want, there is not any person in France who wants to work two uh, more years, no one. It's like 93% uh, of the, the, the people working don't want to, to, to work two, two, much years. two more years, sorry. So, um, so this is not normal, this is not a democracy if, if the, the will of the people is not uh, heard, not respected. So the violent are not the people that are protesting to defend their rights. The violent are the people who are using violence against the people's rights. We know that Emmanuel Macron will be harder and harder and harder with the French people. So this is a moment when we need to, to, to stop him and we need to stop his violence also. And we are demanding the dissolution of um, some part of the police, which is really violent, called, they're called the Bravem in France. They are really violent, they are on, on motos, and they come and they just beat you, and that's it. Okay? So this, this shouldn't exist in a, in a democratic country. This, this is not normal. People have the right to protest. They have the right to not agree with the French president. This is what a democracy is about. And I want to say to the British people, fight. I mean, protest against this law. We, 
we are in a moment um, in Europe when the people are rising. You know, they are like uh, raising their head and they are saying no to that sort of things. We have seen that in Britain, in, in the UK, there, are, there were a lot of protests during, I think, November or December. And this was really um, good for us. I mean, we, we were watching you and we were looking at you and saying, wow, they are strong. They are, they, so it, it gave us some, some power, some courage to, 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 to fight um, in, our, in our own country. So I would say to the, to the British people, sorry, I, I would say to, to you, just do the same. <laughs> so now we are giving you a bit of strength. So now you have to, to fight against this project. At the end of our interview, a Frenchman leaned in and whispers an address to us. The intended location of a manif where protesters would start fires, tag the walls and smash bus stops. And given what happened a few days earlier, almost certainly a violent police response. We're on San Michel and we're playing this bizarre cat and mouse game. So we're we're sort of being, we're running after where these little pop-up pieces of action are taking place across Paris and the police are following all of the action. So behind me there are, well, the police officers outnumber the actual protesters. And so throughout the night there's going to be around four to five pieces of different organised action and they're across the city, all around 10 to 15 minutes walk away from each other and people are just sort of chasing from point to point and the police are chasing after them. So finding the address is quite difficult, it's sort of Chinese whispers, so it's going around on different signal groups and it's just being sort of said mouth to mouth, ear to ear, that's how it's being communicated. Um, so this is clearing out now, which means people will move on to the next location and if the police find out about that, then they'll follow. Gosses armés avec du zèle là dans les poches, la rue fer de l'œil à mes vrais gardés autour de mes proches. J'ai su qu'on n'aura rien sans rien, je valide mes acquis. Petit trip, j'esquive, je mets les pieds dans le. The French Constitution means it's a near certainty Macron will remain in position until 2027, even if millions call for his resignation. And while French democracy is harmed by his unilateral imposition of laws, alongside increased surveillance and police violence, what happens next could be worse. There's no successor in Macron's party. It was essentially a vehicle to install him in the presidential palace. There is one, however, elsewhere, the far right's Marine Le Pen, who has spearheaded opposition to the pension reforms in the French parliament. Le Pen has lost three presidential elections, but the margin of defeat grows more narrow each time. And those calling for the resignation of their president need to consider who will fill the political vacuum left by him. The problem is that in France, Macron was elected because uh, it was uh, in front of a uh, uh, right wing with Marine Le Pen and all the nationalist parts. So it wasn't elected because of his program, but to to fight against the nationalist and racist politics. So that's the reason we're here today. It's against the, the racism in the state. He knows and he actually um, uh, tells, um, says it himself. He knows he was elected against Le Pen. He wasn't elected for his program. He was elected because the French people didn't want Le Pen in power. Uh, so, and he told, uh, told it himself uh, in his speech after the election uh, that he knew that. So, and now that we, we know that even Parliament uh, and um, a majority of French people are against this reform specifically, you know, he could be a little bit intelligent and just not do it. I would like him to resign because I was against him for the first day uh, uh, of uh, when he was uh, elected uh, president. I didn't vote for him uh, the first time and uh, everything else, but, and, and I think last time he was elected only because uh, against him was uh, Marine Le Pen, who is a uh, right, uh, uh, right wing uh, and who is a uh, fascist, really. And uh, so that's why people voted for him. And he forgot that. He thinks people voted for him because they like him. And that's not the case. And uh, yesterday there was a big uh, football uh, soccer uh, match um, at the Stade de France. And uh, at the 14, 49th uh, minute, uh, people started to scream Macron démission. The whole, the whole stadium. And that's, that's great. And that's the sign that yeah, he's, he's in very big trouble. So I'm not quite sure he's going to resign. We're not there yet, but 
Uh, I think his government is going to uh, to resign, and I think his pension reform is going to uh, to fall uh, and to going to be uh, withdrawn. Um, but when is that going to happen? That's the only question. But it's it's a matter of days. And uh, and since uh, you're uh, from uh, England, right? Uh, I think one of the signs that is in big trouble is that uh, your king is not coming to France. <laughs>